Hi everyone, welcome to English 388 Postcolonial Studies. My name is Dr. Marla Zubel and I'm an assistant professor here in the English department at WKU. Of course, here I am in my home office for the semester, but I wanted to make this short video to introduce you to the course, to say a few things about the course materials and the assignments, and to just kind of orient you to what to expect through um, our online course this semester. I will also be making another short video that connects with the optional reading assignment for this week, which is really going to start to raise some questions about what is post-colonial studies? What do we mean by the term post in front of colonial? And you know, how is this going to inform the literature that we read this semester? So let me begin by saying that I really want you to be aware that this is an English class, okay? Yes, it's a colonnade and it's perfectly fine if English isn't your major, but it is an upper level English class. So I will be expecting you to be an upper level English type student if you're in this class, which means that I will expect you to do a lot of reading. Some of it will be theoretical, some of it will be literary, and I will also expect you to do a lot of writing about that literature. So keep that in mind. If you were taking this class just because it was available, you need a colonnade, but you aren't really that interested in reading and writing, or you, you know, typically tend to do better in other disciplines, that's fine, no judgment, but this might not be the class for you if you really aren't willing to put in the work to read a lot of material over the course of the semester, okay? So I just wanna put that out there. I've had some issues with this in the past and I want people to be aware of what they're getting into. So first of all, let me say a little bit about the reading. The first readings will come from a course packet. This course packet is available on Blackboard as a PDF. Normally, I require students to print out the course packet because it's a lot of pages to read you know, on your computer screen. Of course, I can't require you to do that, and some of you might not have access to printers or to resources to do that this semester. So if you need to read it on your computer screen, that's fine, but just be aware that it's a lot of material and a lot of pretty dense material. So if you are the kind of person who does better when you have actual paper in front of you and you can underline and highlight and pose questions, then I really encourage you to print it out. And in fact, I think that type of person is all of us. So if you are able to print it out, please do. Otherwise, you can you know, read it as a PDF as you wish. In addition to the course packet material, we will also have several novels. We will be reading, let's see, in order. We'll read Heart of Darkness. This is the first novel on deck. Now, Heart of Darkness is only 100 pages. A lot of this particular edition is additional resources. So if you um, have a different edition, that's fine, but I find this one really helpful with the additional resources that it offers. Then we will be reading Tanua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. Again, any edition is fine. You might have a version of it that you read in high school or for another class um, that looks a little different than this, and, and that's fine. They almost all have the same page numbers in my experience. We will then be reading um, this, this book, Season of Migration to the North uh, by Tayeb Sally. So it's a short novel and it's fairly modernist, very complicated. So it's short but dense and will require kind of a lot from you. As will this work by Aimé Césaire, it's called Notebook of a Return to the Native Land. It's a work um, originally in French. Season of Migration to the North is originally in Arabic. And this work, it will be um, a very complicated poetic discourse on colonialism from an Afro-Francophone Caribbean perspective. So this will be for all you poets in the room. And we will be reading Arundhati Roy's God of Small Things. This of course is um, an Indian novel written in English originally, but one that really incorporates other languages and really interrogates what post-colonial India looks like in the 1960s and 70s and as well as in the 90s. It flashes back in time quite a bit. So this will be something we read towards the end of the semester. And then we will also be reading Jamaica Kincaid's A Small Place. This text is about, um, well, it's actually more of an essay that has since been made into a book, really kind of a personal essay about what it means to be from the Caribbean and how one looks at the tourists that come to the Caribbean without being very aware of the history of that part of the world. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of reading. We will read <laughs> voraciously this semester and it will require you to demonstrate that you've done the reading through a variety of assignments. So let me say that a little bit more about that. You will have two major writing assignments. You'll have a midterm essay 
and you will have a final essay. Of course, there will be prompts and there will be, you know, I will guide you in what I expect of those. For more information about that, though, you can take a look at the syllabus that's on Blackboard. You will also be required to post discussion board posts each week, and I will say more about this next week, but I'm going to put you in discussion board groups so that you won't just be posting to the entire group, and those groups will rotate every few weeks. I will do that next week, though, because I want to make sure that the enrollment stabilizes before I put everyone in groups. So for now, for this week, your first, your first discussion board post, which is mostly just you introducing yourself, will be to the entire group. Okay, so that will happen weekly. There will also be reading quizzes. The reading quizzes will happen every two to three weeks and they're listed on the syllabus. So be sure that you know when those are. You know, if you fall behind on the reading, be sure to get caught up before the next quiz. The quiz will cover everything that we've read up until that point uh, or since the last quiz. So put those on your calendar, be aware of them. I will post them to Blackboard and then you'll have a few days to finish them and do them. In addition to that, we're going to do a group project at the end of the semester around whether the U.S. still has colonies today and some you know, kind of historical debates around that. So again, I will say more about that, but that will be a way for you to also earn points in the class other than writing a formal essay. Okay, um, in addition to those things, I want to say a few things about how the course is going to just function, how it's going to move. So, Let's imagine you wake up on a Monday morning and here's what your week will look like in relation to this course. You will log into Blackboard and you will go to the syllabus. Now maybe you've already printed out the syllabus or maybe it's already on your desktop. In either case, you'll look at the syllabus and see what the assignment is for that week, what the reading is. Our first reading for next week, first required reading anyway, is a couple of readings about Christopher Columbus. So you will do those readings then you will, and let me remind you, all the readings that aren't in the books are in the course packet, right? So go to the syllabus, see what the assigned reading is, go to the course packet or the book, do the reading. Then you will want to go back onto Blackboard and look at the content folder. Each week I will post a content folder, and in that folder will be resources that you can use to guide your reading. So those might include links to important supplementary materials, websites, podcasts, etc. They would include perhaps PowerPoint slides, video, um, maybe a short lecture video for me often, maybe some lecture notes or some historical information, context, etc. So you will look at everything that's in that content folder and you will read it, view it, etc. And then at the end of the week, on Fridays, we will have our optional weekly Zoom session. I have made those optional because I know not everyone has access to high-speed internet to be able to connect effectively. So although I really encourage you to show up if you, if you can, I will not be grading you on whether you show up. So show up to all of them if you can, show up to some of them, show up to none of them, but in those weekly sessions we will discuss the reading, you can ask questions, etc. Now we've gotten from Monday to Friday, right? Syllabus assignment, do the reading, engage with the resources I post in the content folder, join the Zoom session, and then you will have to post on the discussion board. You will have to do so, in most cases you will have to do so twice by Sunday. So first in response to the reading by Friday, and then by Sunday in response to what someone else in your group has said. Again, I will say more about that next week once I've established the groups. Some weeks you will also have reading quizzes. So take a look at the syllabus to know when those are on deck. Okay, that's what a typical week in this class is going to entail. And if you want to make appointment with me to go over anything related to the course, something about the reading, maybe a very particular question about the reading or something more practical or any concern you might have, you can do so through the link to my Calendly, which is a app for creating appointments. You can look at that on Blackboard and click on that and make an appointment. Now I will have regular office hours in the sense that my office, my office hours are going to be Mondays and Tuesdays in the afternoons. That's what I'm blocking off for meeting, but I will not be just sitting here on Zoom waiting for you to log on. So you will need to make an appointment at those times with me. If you are not available at those times and you need to make another appointment, email me, we'll try to work something out. We can probably do that. 
Additionally, I've created a question section on Blackboard in a, as a particular forum. So if you have a kind of practical or logistical question and you post that there, I will be checking it. You can post it anonymously and I will respond as soon as possible. You can also email me, but sometimes you know, I might be more able to respond quickly in these other formats, okay? Well, that's all the logistics of the class. So I'm going to sign off now and I'm going to make another video that connects with the optional reading assignment for this week. So if you have any questions about what I expect in this class, read through the syllabus and join our Zoom session this week. And of course, you send me an email if you have any concerns. Okay, I look forward to working with all of you.